I would say of once a kingdom and a woman who lost her throne. I would sigh and tell a tale of the king who left his home. If I could tell a story of a man and a woman named Eve, then I could weave a fairy tale that none would ever believe. Hello everyone, it is April 29th, 2019, and this is part two of my explanation of the latest song that I've written and have posted to YouTube that is called A Fairy Tale. The, what you just heard is um, at, the, at the end of the first verse of it. And if you listen to part one of this uh, explanation, you understand that this song is really an allegory. And an allegory is a story, a poem, a picture, a song that is used to reveal a hidden meaning or a message. And one of the definitions that I looked at said that allegories are exciting because they use characters and events to convey a meaning. They don't come right out and say it. Well, that is certainly true with this last song that I wrote. And it's really been kind of a surprising um, song and event for me because it has opened up some scriptures to me in a new way that is very exciting and it will be something that I explain in some detail here and much more in later videos that I will soon be doing. I told you in the last video that that little bit or the first part of the song is dealing with the story of Adam and Eve and the fact that Adam willingly left his throne in order to remain with Eve and to remain one flesh with Eve. Eve sinned by eating of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And therefore, according to the word of the Lord, in that day she would die. Adam had been joined to her as one flesh, as we read in Genesis chapter 2. And so Adam, in order to stay with Eve, voluntarily left his throne, left his kingdom of Eden in order to stay with his wife. Now the next uh, verse of the song goes like this. If I could see into the word that created everything, if I could see behind the veil where gods and angels sing, what we're dealing with here is the reality of who God is, who Jesus is. As the second verse of the song begins, this is the picture we see. This picture actually ends the first verse and begins the second verse. The picture represents Adam, who is searching now for Eve, who wants to remain one with Eve. But it also leads into a new revelation. The second verse begins like this. It says, if I could see into the word that created everything, if I could see behind the veil where gods and angels sing, if I could tell a story of a king and the woman he loved, then I would tell the story written in the stars above. The picture that you see here 
is the picture you see at the end of the first verse and the beginning of the second verse. The picture depicts two separate ideas. The first is Adam leaving his kingdom, leaving his throne, searching for Eve and wanting to remain one with her. Then the second verse begins and it says, If I could see into the word that created everything, if I could see behind the veil where gods and angels sing. That's a transition where this picture now represents not Adam, but Christ. And so Christ is the word and he is the one who created everything. But he created everything in a veiled way so that we do not see into heaven. We do not see behind the veil. We do not see the place where gods and angels sing. And I use the word gods because the scripture says, and Jesus affirmed this when he spoke to the Pharisees, that we are gods with a small g, but the whole purpose of creation is that we would become a son of God and a son is like his father. And so the scripture affirms that we are gods and that's what is being spoken of in the, that um, beginning of the second verse. Then after that, we move to this picture. And that is um, the second part of the, of the second verse of the song that goes, If I could tell a story of a king and the woman he loved, then I would tell the story written in the stars above. Well, the stars, God placed the stars in constellations, groups of stars that men have made into shapes and into stories. And there are books that have been written, for example, called The Gospel in the Stars, that tells the entire story of creation by using the constellations, by talking about what each constellation means with respect to the story of Christ and the story of creation, the story of God with man. And so, as we saw Adam leave his throne for Eve, for his wife, because of Eve eating of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, so, in reality, Christ left his throne for his bride. People talk about the bride of Christ. People, talk, people say that the church is the bride of Christ. But they really seldom understand the full ramifications of what that means. I want to go to uh, a scripture now that talks a little bit about this. This is in 1 Corinthians. First Corinthians 15, and I am going to start at verse 20. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. But as by a man came death, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive. Now there's profound truth in that one scripture. And don't let your preachers, don't let um, your commentaries on the Bible mislead you, but look at the words themselves. First of all, how many people died in Adam? Well, the scripture says 
and Adam all die. How many are included in the word all? Everyone. And then in the very same verse, the very same phrase, verse 22, 1 Corinthians 15, 22, For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive. Let me ask you this. Did the meaning of the word all change in that verse? Of course not. All meant all people. All people died in Adam. All people share in a carnal nature, a carnal nature that sins. We all sin. We all fail. None of us are righteous. No, not one, says the scripture. But in Christ, all shall be made alive. Well, every preacher, almost every preacher that I've heard says, all who believe shall be made alive. All who receive salvation shall be made alive. That's not what the scripture says. Now, just as there are two men in the scripture, Adam and Christ, so also there are two women in the scripture, Eve and the bride of Christ. Which of those two do we, are we in? Which one of those two women do we associate with? Do we partake of? Let's continue reading in this portion of scripture from, from uh, 1 Corinthians 15. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive. But each in his own order, Christ the first fruits, then at his coming those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end when he delivers the kingdom to God the Father after destroying every rule and every authority and power. He must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. For God has put all things in subjection under his feet. But when it says all things are put in subjection, it is plain that he is accepted who put all things in subjection under him. When all things are subjected to him, then the Son himself will also be subjected to him who put all things in subjection under him, that God may be all in all. This is talking about the relationship of the Father and the Son here. Otherwise, what do people mean by being baptized on behalf of the dead? If the dead are not raised at all, why are people baptized on their behalf? I'm going to skip a couple of verses and go to verse 35. But someone will ask, how are the dead raised? With what kind of body do they come? You foolish person, what you sow does not come to life unless it dies. And what you sow is not the body that is to be, but a bare kernel, perhaps of wheat or some other grain. But God gives it a body as he has chosen, and to each kind of seed its own body. For not all flesh is the same, but there is one kind for humans, another for animals, another for birds, and another for fish. There are heavenly bodies and there are earthly bodies. But the glory of the heavenly is of one kind, and the glory of the earthly is of another. There is one glory of the sun, another glory of the moon, another glory of the stars, for star differs from star in glory. So it is with the resurrection of the dead. What is sown is perishable, what is raised is imperishable. He's talking now about our bodies that are sown, okay, about the flesh. Our flesh is perishable but it is raised imperishable. It is mortal now, it will be raised immortal. It is sown in dishonor. Through our sin, we dishonor our bodies. It is raised in glory. The Bible speaks of the glorification of the sons of God. The Bible speaks of the glorification of the overcomers, the glorifications, the glorification of those who will walk with God and walk in his way. It is sown in weakness, it is raised in power. Who does not feel weak in their flesh? 
but, it, but our bodies will be raised in power. It is sown a natural body, and it is raised a spiritual body. If there is a natural body, there is also a spiritual body. Thus it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living being or a living soul. The last Adam became a life-giving spirit. But it is not the spiritual that is first, but the natural and then the spiritual. The first man was from the earth. That's Adam, a man of dust. The second man is from heaven. Who's that? Jesus. There are two men. The Bible speaks of two men. There's Adam. There's Christ. This is why in the scripture you often have two people where one is chosen, one is not chosen. One God hates, the other God loves. And people have misunderstood this to think that God is a respecter of persons and therefore he just hates such and such, you know, I mean, he's no good. And he loves such and such. He, he is really something. No, the point is God hates the carnal. God hates sinfulness. And that's the whole idea of God hating Esau and loving Jacob. Because Jacob is the picture of the one who is striving to become a spiritual man. Jacob becomes Israel. Israel is the code word in scripture for the overcomers. So, back to verse 45. Thus it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living soul. The last Adam became a life-giving spirit. But it is not the spiritual that is first, but the natural and then the spiritual. That's why... We had Adam come first, and Adam was natural, born of the earth. He was made of dust. The first man was from the earth, a man of dust. The second man is from heaven. As was the man of dust, so also are those who are of the dust. Well, we are all of the dust. We are all carnal. We are all given to sin. None of us are righteous. None of us can make it on our own. None of us can make it on our own. We all will be outside of New Jerusalem. Just go to chapter 21 and chapter 22 in the book of Revelation, and you will see that you still fit at least one of those sins that God says are those who are outside of New Jerusalem. We cannot get in by ourselves. So how do we get in? That's the mystery of the entire Bible. And that's the allegory in this song. As was the man of dust, so also are those who are of the dust. And as is the man of heaven, so also are those who are of heaven. Just as we have borne the image of the man of dust, we shall also bear the image of the man of heaven. Wow. Wow. We read it, and it doesn't mean anything to us. We have borne the image of the man of dust. We bear that image now. But what does this say? We will also bear the image of the man of heaven. I tell you this, brothers. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable you can't be good enough. In your flesh, you cannot inherit the kingdom. You can't get in to New Jerusalem in your flesh. You never will. Verse 51, 1 Corinthians 15, 51. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. We shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised imperishable, and we shall be changed. For this perishable body must put on the imperishable, and this mortal body must put on immortality. When the perishable puts on the imperishable, and the mortal puts on immortality, 
Then shall come to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your victory? O death, where is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brothers, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that in the Lord your labor is not in vain. Now, this is the promise that we have. This is the message that's written in the stars. The timing though, is what is different for different people. One of the reasons why people get confused about whether or not someone is ever going to make it into the New Jerusalem, which is what most people call heaven or not, one of the reasons they get confused is because they do not see that there is an order of people coming into that position. It doesn't happen at the same time for every person. There are first fruits. Jesus was the first fruit, but there is still going to be a resurrection of our bodies for those who have already died and for those who are still alive and left when it's time. And that's what people call the rapture. That is only for the first fruits. It is not a general resurrection. And that's because not everyone is ready. Most people simply have not prioritized their lives. They have not made Christ the center of their life. They have not walked the narrow road that Jesus says we must walk. They have not even desired to be perfect as Jesus says we must be perfect. So as the second part of the song begins, the words to the second part of the song begin, we see Jesus now walking, leaving his throne in heaven, coming to earth as a man in order to seek and to save that which is lost. We're all lost. We've all been lost. Remember the parable Jesus said, if you have 100 sheep and you count 99 and 99 are there, then the good shepherd is going to go out and and find the one sheep that is lost. Well, that's exactly what Jesus did and does today. That's why the picture is here in the song that shows a man alone a man who left his throne in order to save his bride, to become one with his bride, just as Adam had done with his wife, Eve. We will end here now. There are many more images that need to be explained in this song, but the song is an allegory. It tells a story and the story is hidden because the story has been hidden in the scriptures as well. And the song in one song is telling the the entire story of creation. I hope that this has been enlightening to you and gives you understanding, and I pray that your eyes and ears will be opened, your spiritual eyes, your spiritual ears will be opened in the name of Jesus. Amen.